praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today. Friday, the 2nd of February, 2024. I'm carrying the magic Open Heavens is authored by Adadim, the Lord Pastor, E.A. Adeboye, the General of Asia of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful for another beautiful day. We are grateful for your word again. Father, we say blessed be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will speak your word to us. You will draw us closer through your words in the name of Jesus. And may your name be glorified at the end of the day in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we are looking at different types of songs. Different types of songs. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Galatians 4 verse 31. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. A Bible reading is taken from the book of Galatians 4, verse 19 to 31. My dear children, for whom I am again in pains of childbirth, until Christ is formed in you, how I wish I could be with you now and change my tone because I am perplexed about you. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. The son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but the son by the free woman was born as a result of a divine promise. These things are being taken figuratively. The women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child, shout for joy and cry aloud, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now, you brothers and sisters like Isaac are children of promise, at that time, the son born according to the flesh persecuted the son born by the power of the spirit. It is the same now. But what does the scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son. For the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of, slave, of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The message. There are many categories of children, and I will be discussing some of them today. The first type I will look at are the ones referred to as prodigal, like we have in Luke 15, 11 to 24. By the grace of God, I will never become a prodigal son in Jesus' name. I'll encourage you to say the same prayer for yourself. When God blesses me, I will not squander his blessing. I will use them for his works. Some people believe that the only way you can show that God is blessing you is by showing off, wearing golden shoes and clothes, and walking as if you own the whole world. These are the attributes of people that are referred to as prodigal sons, and I have made up my mind never to become such. What about you? Another category of children that the Bible talks about are those that bring grief to their fathers. The Bible says that a foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. Proverbs 17 verse 25. I have equally made up my mind never to be one of such in Jesus' name. Psalm 14 verse 1 says that the fool is one who says that there is no God. And it goes on further to say that a fool is a corrupt person. I acknowledge God in all that I do and I refuse to become corrupt. I will never cause my father in heaven grief. What about you? If you go to Matthew 3 verse 16 to 17, however, the Bible talks of my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is the kind of son I want to be. I want to be the kind of son that God will look down on and say, This one, I love him. You can be kind of a friend too. God has had, has had sons who became friends over the ages. Abraham, 
who was a friend of God, Isaac 41 verse 8. I am so sure he also said, Adeboye is my friend. You can tell who will become a beloved child of God as well as his friend by how much time they are willing to spend in his presence. The kind of sons that yearn for a close fellowship with God and desire to please him at all times are the ones who doesn't just read the Bible but also study and meditate on it daily so as to know God more and draw closer to him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we are looking at different types of sons. Yesterday, our daddy in the Lord spoke to us about becoming a son of God, part two. And he said that for you to become a son of God, one of the things you have to do is to remain in God's presence. You know, people that are sons of God are people that God's thought run in their minds all the time. Another thing that he said we must do is that we must always seek to glorify his, our Father. So people that glorify him, they don't want to have, they don't want their relationship with him to have any dent. They are always protective of their relationship with God. These are people that are sons of God. Today we are looking at this topic about sonship. We are also in a, a father, you know, and today we are looking at the different types of sons. In today's devotion, I think the Lord spoke to us about three different types of sons. The prodigal son, and also he spoke about some sons that bring grief and bitterness to their father, and another one who is a beloved son of God that God is pleased with. I pray that for you and I, will be the beloved son of God that God is pleased with in Jesus' name. Amen. Who are the prodigal sons? These are those sons who all the time that God blesses them, the only thing they want to do is just to show off. That is when they want to buy some expensive thing. They want to squander the money. They are not interested in using this money to glorify the name of the Lord. They are not interested in using this money for the Lord. But rather, they want to squander it you know, at every time. And I pray in the name of Jesus that for me, and I pray for you also, that you will not be... And I will not be a prodigal son in the name of Jesus. Like our daddy in the Lord has said, he said he has made up his mind not to become a prodigal son. What about you? The second category are those that bring grief to their father. The Bible says that a foolish son is a, is a grief to his father and bitterness to have that be him. So uh, when, when the father thinks of such people, they bring bitterness, they bring grief to their parents. That will not be your portion and my portion in the name of Jesus. We will always bring joy to the Lord in Jesus' name. And who are the, and the Bible also in Psalm 41, 14 verse 1 says that a fool is one who says there is no God. Which means in every of their equation, God is out of it. And that is why they are, they are fools. He said a foolish son. You know, a foolish son. There is a prodigal son. There is a foolish son. And a foolish son, all the foolish sons can end up with is bringing bitterness and sadness you know, and grief to his father because he does not acknowledge God and is a is corrupt, is a corrupt son. For me, I will always acknowledge God in everything I do. It says the Bible says, trust God with all your heart. Don't lean on to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. So people that are not fools, you know, they 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 acknowledge God. God runs in their mind. They have an understanding that everything that they do. You know, I was talking to somebody today and in every of our, our conversation at one point or the other, she's just glorifying the name of the Lord. And even in the pettiness, she was even like, oh, that we didn't go to a particular place today. She knows that because God knows that there's a blessing for her. She had to, you know, had to wait. You know, at every, at the slightest, even speaking about a relationship that she had with a friend of hers, how the thing went sour. And God, you know, she was acknowledging God even to the very letter. And that's how God wants us to relate with him. I pray that the grace to acknowledge God, to understand, to realize, to come to realization that in everything and, and anything that we are doing, that we are, that we can ever become, it is God is our Alpha and our Omega. The Lord will give us grace to have that understanding and to live in that actualization in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the, the beautiful one that is an attribute that God gave Jesus Christ is a beloved son whom he is well pleased with. Everything that will make us please God, that God will testify concerning you and I, that we are his beloved children. He would give unto us 
the grace to exhibit such attributes he will give unto us in the name of Jesus. Who are the beloved son that God is pleased with? You know, these are people who are always in the presence of God. They spend quality time in the presence of God. I pray that at the end of the day, God will say concerning me, will say concerning you, that we are his beloved. And like we are told today, there are some persons who their relationship has even gone beyond just friendship. They have transcended from friendship even, I mean, from sonship even to friendship. An example is Abraham. I pray that God will testify concerning me and you that we are his friends. Just as he said, Abraham is his friend in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are told that if you, sons of God that God is pleased with, they spend quality time in the presence of God. In fact, if they want to embark in an activity, probably it could be in anything. It could even be something that is of virtue. But once they know that it will take their quality time with the Lord, they will rather let it go. So they put God first in all they do. If they want to go for an education, if they want to go for courses, and they know that, I oh, will it give me time? In fact, before they get, they take a particular job, they have to consider the press, their, their relationship with God, the time they spend with God. I pray that for you and I, we will go to that level, that we will, we will cherish our relationship, the presence of the Lord, even more than anything and everything in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And how do we do that? We are told that we should read our Bible, study the Bible word of God, and meditate on it daily. People who are God, who God is pleased with, who also can grow to the level of being common friends of God. There are people that read their Bible. They don't just end in reading it. They study it. They meditate in it. You know, they dilute it, let it run in their DNA. And they carry it on because it directs their path. It directs them on a daily basis. And why do they do this? They do it so that they can know God and they can be drawn closer to Him. Because what is paramount in their heart is knowing God and drawing closer to Him. I pray that you receive grace to make what to, you know to prioritize getting closer to God and knowing God in, in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The word of God says that we should love him with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. Those that love God at this level, they are people that they study the word of God to know him and to draw closer to him. The key point says, son, who will grow to become God's beloved and friends, enjoy staying in his presence for long hours. For you and I, the Lord will give us grace. Even as we study this word, as we listen to it, we will go over it again. To help us to know God better and to draw closer to Him in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review for today. God bless you. Amen.